My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm the curator at the Sun Valley Museum of Art, and our fall 2023 exhibition is titled Sightings. This exhibition is a look at the human fascination with night skies and also with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. I started planning this exhibition a number of years ago. In the pandemic, I read about an uptick in sightings of UFOs across the country. I became interested in the idea that maybe part of our current fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial life is a desire to connect with something beyond our planet exhibition doesn't try to answer the question of what people are seeing, but rather why they're looking and how they experience them. The work of Cable Griffith, which I saw a number of years ago when he did a whole project called Sightings, and he graciously let me take that title for this exhibition. I am Cable Griffith. I'm an artist and educator from Seattle. I had always really been interested in stories and accounts of unexplained phenomena and reports of UFOs. A little while ago, Courtney Gilbert um, of the museum reached out to me. In thinking about what I wanted to do, it was hard not to respond to the current events of the time around 2020 being kind of in the middle or peak of, of pandemic. And I, was, I wanted to do something that was really rooted in a very domestic perspective, specifically in my own house, my own family, and this idea of being in under lockdowns and social distancing. So one of the bodies of work for the show, uh, it's called Self-Fulfilling Proph Prophecy, and uh, the two paintings on either side of me. And these paintings took a uh, kind of more pictorial view of being inside of a domestic space, looking out the window into sort of a kind of mundane, almost just kind of regular, plain, average suburbs. and. I was interested in how the painting in this way, when it becomes really like a window, it's sort of like kind of pretending it's not even there and uh, kind of positions the viewer to just sort of look out um, and ignore the painting altogether. And thinking about how this idea of this external other or this external threat could be both a source of fear, a source of anxiety, a source of wonder. So th these two paintings, although really related, um, they have some really distinct differences too. This painting here has a bit, a bit more of a kind of fantastical thinking, optimistic perspective where the, the object outside the window is actually um, a drawing that my son uh, did who's seven years old. I had asked him to draw a bunch of different UFO shapes and this is one that he came up with. And I had kind of integrated it in, into the painting and made it sort of feel like it's maybe glowing and somewhat actual outside. And the other painting of the UFO is also a drawing my son did, but it's mo much more mundane. It's on a sticky note. You can tell that it's not real, um, although it sort of somewhat appears to be floating out there. The other body of work for this show is called Domestic Visitation. And these paintings are all painted on loose dyed uh, canvas. The fabric is dyed, it is folded to create a sort of a sense of a night sky. And then I use a photogram technique to burn images into the, into the, the canvas itself. These images are sourced from well-known UFO photographs that are sort of in many archives that I um, have implemented into, the, into these compositions. An artist I've also worked with before and I'm a huge admirer of Deb Sokolow because of her research-based process and her interest in kind of diving into peripheral histories in, in our world. She also was enthusiastic about making new work. My name is Deb Sokolow and for the exhibition there is a 12 foot long artist book that I made as well as some additional drawings. And the work is based on the true story of Reverend Milton Haar um, and his religious group uh, relocating from North Dakota to Blaine County, Idaho uh, to settle on top of an abandoned mine. This was in 1960. The mine closed a few years before that. Somehow Reverend Milton Haar found out about this abandoned mine and uh, relocated his religious group to the mine site. They bought up all the buildings above the mine and started living there. And specifically for the reason 
that it's the visiting scientists from outer space that are visiting this mine site. And they are um, apparently conducting experiments on humans and plant life in the soil uh, around the mine site. They were trying to communicate with these aliens. And so I kept thinking, what if Reverend Milton Har was right about this? What if there were aliens that were there in the, that location? Um, so the 12 foot long book that I made um, for this exhibition explores that notion from the point of the view of the aliens. Uh, what would aliens think about Milton Har and his religious group? How would they feel about Milton Har being there and perhaps impeding their progress in their research? So there's the 12 foot long book in the exhibition and then six drawings which accompany it. And in all these works, there's text and there's also image and all of the imagery is abstract or semi-abstract or map or diagram. In my work, I pair the two together and I'm always interested in moments where the text uh, and the images don't quite match up. Something gets lost in, in, in translation perhaps, or something is revealed in the images that isn't mentioned in the text and vice versa. So I think that's definitely part of the show, this feeling of thinking that there might be something out there, but not quite knowing, it feels so nebulous and it feels like there's a lot of sort of unknown entities, right? Unknown aspects to whatever, whatever it is that is that you think you saw in the night sky or that may have landed in a field, but you're not entirely sure. In addition to the two bodies of work that they created for this show, the exhibition features artwork by a number of other late 20th, early 21st century artists who are all exploring these same ideas. So Timothy Wiley uh, was a, a real believer in the idea of UFOs um, and his ability to communicate with extraterrestrial beings. My name is Benjamin Tischer. I'm here from New Discretions in New York, representing Timothy Wiley, who was a author and artist who spent the last 30 years of his life trying to establish communication with non-human intelligent beings, be those dolphins, aliens, or angels. Here we're kind of focusing on the aliens. So I met Timothy twice during his lifetime. He never told me that he was an artist. He was primarily an author. Uh, his past was that he was number three down in a kind of iconic pop culture cult in London called the Process Church of the Final Judgment. It was the first cult to use pop culture as kind of a propaganda unit and they would go around and sell these magazines that they had made that were like psychedelic magazines and the whole cult dissolved um, as cults do and after that Timothy said that dolphins and aliens you talk to just like we would be talking uh, angels you have to use your imagination a little bit more uh, after he passed away there was a woman named June Atkins who inherited all the work and we got in touch with each other and she kept encouraging me to come and see this work. There were over 300 immaculate colored pencil drawings there. He only used Prismacolor. Um, from what I was able to glean from recorded interviews with him, the drawings were only for himself. They weren't really made for public consumption. Um, many of them are diaristic. He actually did see some UFOs in Sedona. He also did these incredible abstract works that he said he could heal himself and heal others by making. Um, these are all the very figurative, almost illustrative pieces in the collection, which there aren't that many, so they're very special. They're really kind of a treat. 
An interesting parallel to the work of Timothy Wiley is that of a Romanian painter, Ionel Talpazan, who wound up settling in the United States as an adult. Um, Talpazan had an experience as a child at the age of eight or nine of hiding in the woods and seeing this incredibly um, bright blue object floating above him, emitting enormous amount of light and then it took off into the sky and that experience was one he returned to over and over again in drawings that he made of spacecraft often in cross-section he was fascinated by the idea of the different types of mechanics that might be able to propel interstellar spacecraft and so he spent a lot of his practice making these intricate drawings with text in Romanian and English um, detailing what he believed were the electromagnetic motorized components of the spacecraft that he had seen as a child. So we have a couple of those drawings in the show. And then we have work by a number of artists whose practices aren't necessarily focused on the idea of extraterrestrial life but kind of reference the possibility. Um, Carla Knight is a painter based in Connecticut who has over the last four decades been developing a really beautiful and complex visual language of signs and symbols and forms that she uses in works that are usually presented in a grid-like form. Knight grew up in a family in which her father wrote books about UFOs and other paranormal phenomena, so it's a topic that's been of interest to her for a long time. She doesn't talk about what the symbols that she works with means. She, she leaves it up to the visitor to kind of interpret these images themselves, but often sort of spaceship flying saucer type forms appear in the work. And so I think, you know, a lot of her work is really about the idea of communication too, and different systems of communication. And which leads me as a viewer to think about if there is extraterrestrial life, how, how might we communicate with beings from elsewhere? Robin O'Neill came to national attention in the early 2000s for these really fascinating large-scale drawings of male figures always dressed in sweatsuits wearing white Nikes in kind of mysterious forested landscapes, sometimes in fighting with each other, sometimes wrestling. Um, they're very enigmatic. In more recent work, she's made a number of drawings that include um, images of skies with strange objects floating in them. And so for it, for instance, we have a drawing of a cloud, what looks like a sort of a thunderhead cloud, opening up like a mouth almost as animals run across the landscape below. And, you know, the, the possibilities of what this cloud might be are left to the viewer. We have another drawing she made called Taco, which is this beautiful image of a, a drawing of a taco floating in the sky above this sort of mountainous landscape. And I think you know, she and I had a conversation about the exhibition um, as I was planning it, and, and one of the things that was of interest to her was whether or not people in a search for connection with otherworldly life are actually looking for a sort of spiritual connection. And I think of the taco as the idea that maybe what we're seeing in the sky is actually just our projected desires. Esther Pearl Watson is an artist who spent most of her childhood in Texas. Her father was obsessed with the idea of building a working flying saucer. And so he devoted a huge amount of time and family resources to this project. I, he hoped eventually to sell it to NASA in an attempt to help them contact extraterrestrial beings. And so she's made lots of scenes of daily life, children playing outside in yards, people walking outside of a movie theater or, or on a main street in town, often with brightly colored flying saucers and other kinds of ships hovering in the sky above them. I think one of the sources that she's looking at in her work is the tradition of ex voto or milagro paintings, small paintings made in the U.S. Southwest and in Mexico to thank God or the Virgin Mary or another saint or, or Jesus for a miracle, for a healing or, or another kind of miracle. But in her case, I think these are paintings in which people are still waiting for the miracle. The miracle hasn't happened, it's unrealized. 
I hope people will come in and enjoy the exhibition. It will be up all fall until December 2nd. Um, admission is always free and we welcome people for tours and all kinds of activities related to the, the topic of the show.